the fifth word from the cross. John chapter 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my God, my Redeemer. Amen. I might as well tag the text, my two cents. It's, it's in a desperate situation that you find out what a person is really made of. When it gets difficult, when it's dark, when it's desperate, some folks shrink. Other folks shift. You're not with me. Um, here we are, standing at the foot of this old rugged cross. Jesus hanging there with six inch nails in his hands. He's hanging there with six inch nails in his feet. Somebody made a makeshift crown from a local bush and they put the crown on his head and crushed it with the thorns. And blood now is flowing into his eyes and down his back. He's been hanging there in a fit of asphyxiation all these hours. The blood vessels of his sacred body are almost dried up. A dreadful fear rages through his frame. His tongue cleaves to his jaws and his lips are, are burning. It's a peculiar situation because it appears that the water of heaven has run dry. And, 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 and I, I, I can't conceive of this, that, that living water is thirsty. No, no, it's, it's a strange situation because, because he said that I come that you might have life. And he said I came to set the captives free. Yet here he is hanging seemingly helplessly from a cross. We, we got to deal with this because now we're nearing the end of this side of the journey and he has the unmitigated gall and audacity to say I thirst and, 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 and this is a problem for me because his situation doesn't match his proclamation But, but, but lest I go too far and be a hypocrite, I must confess that I've been there when my situation didn't always match my proclamation. There have been times when I wanted 
to give up knowing that I had the victory. There's been times when I felt like a failure knowing that I have favor. I've been there. So, so, so maybe that's not my real issue. Uh, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. The, the text says that Jesus, knowing all things are accomplished, says, I thirst. He, he's dying. His, his mission, by his own admission, is over. He's accomplished it. It was done. It's time to quit. But Jesus says, it's done. He's about to quit. But he says, I thirst. If it was over, why does he need water? Um, um, when you quit, you don't need to be quenched. No, no, water is what you need when you plan to live. But his dying words are, I thirst. Now, I read a few books, been to a few schools, but I'm not too smart because I can't get this. I would understand if after the first word, Reverend Hoggard, if Jesus looked out at the cantankerous crowd and the pseudo saints and the dysfunctional disciples and he said, I forgive. I would understand it if after the second word, Reverend Douglas, if Jesus looked over at a dying thief who had just asked him if there is such a thing as a gangster's paradise, would you remember me? And Jesus said, I forgive and I save. I would even remember it right here, Bishop Donaldson, if after the third word, if Jesus anticipated how folks would cut up at his funeral because his mother saw John posting for pictures at the Last Supper, but he got gone in the garden. And when they came for her baby, John was not there. So Jesus puts mother with the brother and that brother with his mother. And he said, I restore. I would understand it, Pastor Gary, if after the fourth word, if Jesus was trying to deal with some daddy issues, because he gave up glory to deal with humanity's redemption story. And he put all of that into us. And Jesus said, I'm looking at the only man I've ever loved. And even though I'm looking up to him, he can't stand to look back at me. And so Jesus says, I hurt. I would understand all of that. But here, at the fifth word from the cross, Jesus says, I thirst. Can I just be spiritually nosy and eschatologically inquisitive and ask you in your dark and desperate situation, what two words would you say? Now, 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 before you answer too quick, 
let me, let me remind you that Jesus' two words were not even a sentence. They were a sentiment. Okay, you're not there. You're not there. Uh, 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 uh. Jesus, don't miss this, is dying, but he's not done. And when he says, I thirst, that's Jesus giving us his two cents. Oh, my God, I thought you were with me by now. Uh, it's the fifth word, but he still hasn't given us word six or seven. There's, there's two more things that must be said. You're not there. It's, it's the, the fifth word, but he still has two more things. And so he says, I thirst. Because he wants to give us his two cents. Okay, let, let me define this. Here, here it is. Two cents is an American idiomatic expression signifying that after you give your final thoughts, something is about to shift. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God. When you give your spiritual two cents, Things shift from you talking about God to God talking about you. Oh my, can I prove my seat, prove my case before I go to my seat? Uh, uh, the Bible says that there was a woman and she was a widow woman and she walked into a church service one day and in between all the misogyny of the men who were there trying to impress Jesus, she reached in her pocket and pulled out two mites. You're not there with me yet. Uh, it's all that she had to give. Uh, she had been talking to Jesus all morning long. As a matter of fact, she woke up this morning with her mind stayed on Jesus. Walking and talking with her mind stayed on Jesus. She walked into a church service talking to Jesus and then she pulled out her two cents and put it in the basket and walked out and the Bible said that when she left Jesus started talking about her and I just declare tonight that whatever you're going through in your desperate situation if you just give your two cents <laughs> Things will begin to shift. Uh, I got to get out of here. But when you give two cents, uh, no weapon formed against you. Uh, when you give two cents, uh, weeping may endure uh, just for a night. Uh, but joy, uh, when you give your two cents, uh, all things uh, work together for the good. When you give your two cents, I, I just wonder right now, is there anybody here that has two words to give? Can you help me give two cents? Would you shout yeah? Yeah! And that's my two cents. <laughs>